And I'll give you a really good example of a real life situation. My, my mother, uh, years ago, when I started studying Ayurveda at the very beginning in 2006, uh, I, went, I, I went to India for a little bit and I went to Kerala, which is a very, very Ayurvedic kind of resorts that are popping up everywhere now. <laughs> and uh, I was studying even just the basics of, of everything. And I came back from that trip and my mom says that she had gone to the doctor because my mom is extremely kapha. And, and she was having a lot of, you know, uh, congestion because kapha enters your sinuses and everything. She was just congested. She went to a Western doctor. And I have nothing against Western medicine. It is really good for traumatic situations. I'm not going to go to an Ayurveda specialist when I'm in an accident and I need my arm sewed on. <laughs> so, so the doctor said, we're going to perform surgery on you. And so my mom was asking my opinion. And she says, they're going to they're gonna open up my forehead and get into my nose and clean out my sinuses. Okay. And then they're going to, so I can recover, I'm going to be one week with an air ventilator here so that all this gets fixed. And I said, stop. Are you crazy? Don't even go there. She goes, well, what do you mean? I said, what are you eating? <laughs> Went straight to the food. Well, I've been, you know, all these other things that are very cough up, but this is the kicker. I've been eating uh, little Dove bars, those little ice cream bars, oh. every night. So it, obviously, I know her chart as well. So there's three, three debilitated planets. And oh. so there's need for love. And you know, kapha is water. Kapha needs love, it, it's, especially when you're at a deficiency of it. So eating the kapha food makes you feel loved, the sweet. Oh. So of course, so, so understanding Jyotisha and understanding Ayurveda, you could, you know, I'm not a West, uh, medi uh, Vedic astrologer. I mean, medical Vedic astrologer. So, but yet having that little bit of knowledge, you know exactly where it's coming from. Where, why is she needing to eat all that kapha food? Okay. Where is the love lacking? Okay. Everybody can be giving the person love, yet if the person doesn't feel or metabolize the love, because remember, nothing becomes you until it becomes you. And that's meta metabolization in all terms, physically, spiritually, and mentally. So you could be eating all the food possible, but it's not becoming part of you. People could be telling, I love you, I love you, I love you, but it never becomes part of you if you don't have the ability to be able to metabolize it. Oh. So her lack of kapha met meta metabolization was creating a, a, an overflow of kapha in her body and it happened to stay here. And so I said, mom, stop eating those Dove bars and all that dairy food and all that for one month. I said, just do that. Just please just do that. And I kid you not, Babaji, she has never had any sinus issues since then. Just by leaving something, all these things got sorted. Otherwise, <laughs> so much money she would have had to spend. Money? Can you imagine? I mean, that's intrusive surgery. It's like literally tearing apart your whole face. Yeah, the one step before the lobotomy. <laughs> yes, so I guess my, 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 the point of the story is, is that it, everything comes back to basics. Understand the basics. Combine it with a little bit of Jyotisha. Um, you can do wonders with this, this, this field. Yeah, and uh, one last question I always had. I mean, you're the best person I should ask this. So suppose you see, let's take the example of Jupiter here. So suppose you see a Jupiter, if it is debilitated, suppose in Capricorn, or suppose it is exalted. So do you see that there are some extremes related to these two things with the diet and all this? Huh. Well, um, the, the, I, I've seen a few charts with that, and I, I to make the correlations basically. So the the correlations would be that. Um, I mean, it will like always I, happen that you can't study one planet in isolation. 
that's you can never make a judgment that if somebody has a jupiter in debility they will always be like this pertaining to all these doshas and all that though you can never you can never say like we can't see in astrology that if your jupiter is in capricorn you will not have children we can't say that but no i'm just asking i mean sometimes we say that oh jupiter in capricorn is like this so on those lines i was just asking individually have you sometimes uh, uh huh. Yeah. No, I I totally understand. And and if I just have to make a general blanket statement and just it, it, like you said, I mean, putting all other factors aside, Jupiter exalted in Cancer, I would say that the the person is more um, the person has some kind of relationship uh, to 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 um, loving everybody. Uh, so oh. basically having the amount of water in their body, the amount of kapha in their body to be able to encapsulate and withstand the pressure that it comes with being able to hold space. Jupiter holds a lot of space okay, okay. for everybody's suffering, so to speak. Oh. And have a lot of uh, empathy because remember that Water also somehow sucks and brings in other people's pains. Okay. And, and, so, and so then the, the Jupiter in the Capricorn, which is more of an air, rigid, you know, kind of more about let's get to business kind of thing, is, is and I don't know if you would see it manifested in the body, but okay, so like let's say uh, our, our uh, President Obama, uh, <laughs> you know, his Jupiter is debilitated in Capricorn, very slender guy. Um, how would I classify him? He, he's, he, I wouldn't classify him as loving, very caring because of that very, you know, that exalted Saturn and everything, very disciplined, very poised, very together. Cause it, cause it is with, um, well, no, it wasn't, but Jupiter, Jupiter Saturn are together in Capricorn. Uh -huh, correct. That, yes. Yes. And, and so, so, so more of, um, that, 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 the coldness of, of Capricorn and the stern because it's ruled by Saturn kind of makes the Jupiter not have as much space to be oh. able to hold that kind of space for other people. Because remember Jupiter is a little, is more about there's hope and it's like, yes. And so then it's, it's you know, it's expansive. Jupiter could be itself in cancer. It could just go, you know, those kinds of people they are, they're a lot slower. They enjoy life so much more. And then the Jupiter's more constricted, I would say. That's the only way that I can explain it. Okay. Okay. Uh, basically, what I was, uh, in, oh, I was asking on those lines of eating habits or something like that. Like, oh. suppose, so have you seen that uh, Venus of Jupiter or Venus both signify sweets? For example, because these days people keep asking, oh, I, I'm eating too much sweets or something. So have you seen that if uh, Venus is afflicted or it is either exalted or debilitated or when does a person eat too much sweets? On those lines, I was asking. Ah, uh, very interesting. I well, my experience has been the uh, the Venus debilitated a little bit more. Uh, because there, there's something lacking which they feel, which they are trying to fill in, as you said, where they are not finding that. Mm-hmm. Exactly, and and then having the 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 ability to to understand that, and not just sweets, but it does happen to be around sweets, but it can also come down to a lower level of, of even junk food, oh. of desiring that instant gratification, you know, because junk food is loaded with taste, and so Venus and Jupiter both love, you know, they they want. Taste basically in our body satisfies that desire and that satiation. But, and then what they don't understand is that good nutrition and, and higher nutritive value in your food is going to be able to satiate that. But of course, since the affliction is happening on that, on that archetypal uh, planet, then the person is grasping for things that are not at a higher dignity. Remember the dignity of the planets? <laughs> Yeah, so then it can happen, as you said, now, that they feel that I don't have this. So instead of going through healthy ways, they are trying other ways to mitigate that. Exactly. And then, like you said, it would be the, the aspect of, let's say, Rahu or Mercury. So in, in, in isolation, it's hard to say, but in a nutshell, I, you're absolutely right.
It's trying to fill a deficiency. Ah, uh, okay. Yes, I was expecting this. <laughs> Mm -hmm. nice so uh, which topics would you like to speak the next time oh i have a myriad of talk topics of course uh, there is some a notes i was just wondering yes um we could talk about i think uh another topic that's very interesting is um weight reduction mm. i don't call it lose weight because as you know mamsa the muscle weighs more so you don't necessarily lose weight when you reduce probably let's say even let's call it toxin reduction <laughs> toxin reduction and uh so that's a little bit let's just say a little bit of weight loss kind of on how that relates to ayurveda we could talk about that we can also talk yeah. about another subject that has come up quite a bit um is food combinations oh okay and why certain rules of ayurveda also um crimes of nature okay Cr uh, crimes to nature in terms of the Ayurveda perspective. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's another topic we could talk about. And then just simply a little bit more about Ojas and how Ojas is like, let's just say in common terms, the fountain of youth, how to keep that. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And then uh, lastly, we can also talk about just very basic, which is not basic, but it's basic is the three pillars of health. Okay. And what are they? <laughs> uh -huh. The three pillars of health. Uh, those would be sleep. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Your nutrition and exercise okay. and, and restraint, which is called brahmacharya, right? Oh, okay. Thank you very much. So I would be very happy to have you again in my channel. So thank you very much. So and your link will be the down in the description for your channel so whoever is interested please go and subscribe so many videos are there but the language is uh, not english i think or is it in english um in youtube is basically in spanish and espanol uh, for folks uh, a lot of my audience is in mexico and argentina a little bit in spain mm -hmm. And my, the English basics class that I, ha that I offer is on udemy.com and it's called Ayurveda Basics and mm -hmm. I'll, you'll have a link there below. And, uh, and those are basically it for now. Later on, I will be starting webinars for um, classes such as Vastu, which is, okay. uh, the, it, let's just say Indian Feng Shui, for lack of better words, a lot of people don't understand that. Yeah. I'm going to be setting up some Vastu courses and also I'm going to be setting up Hasta Samudrika. So a little basics on, you know, and that's a whole nother, there's not much uh, uh, medical, uh, medical stuff, but it's very interesting also for self-realization and to be able to get to know yourself. So that's something else in the future, just to put it out there. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much then. Very Thank you, Baba. To see you after so long. I was expecting you. Finally, you agreed to come. <laughs> okay. See you then. Namaste. Thank okay. You very much. Namaste. Yeah.